Well, good evening, everybody. It's good to be here tonight, and uh, we do uh, want to welcome you, and uh, we're thankful for each and every one that's come out to be with us here this evening, and uh, we're looking forward to a time of worship tonight in the Lord's house, and uh, looking forward to this service and what God has in store. So uh, we're thankful for each and every one, and uh, we just uh, encourage everybody tonight just to mind the Lord and follow the good Holy Spirit of God. We have several uh, prayer requests that uh, we have that are on our uh, prayer list, our prayer screen, and, and then also in our bulletin that we've been praying for. Uh, so we definitely want to remember each and every one of those tonight. Before we do go to the Lord in prayer this evening, does anybody have a, a request that we need to make mention of and pray for tonight? Senior member Stuart, Stuart, member him and Paulette. Let's pray for them, and as Stuart continues to recover, anyone else? Mm. Let's remember this family, the Lay family, in our prayers. Remember this. Anybody else? Remember this. Remember Sonny Sexton when we pray. And uh, we've, we've got others tonight that we need to remember and pray for. Let's pray for this service. Uh, we want to be much in prayer uh, for the upcoming service on Sunday as well. And uh, as it's already been mentioned this week, we prayed Wednesday night. We want to remember uh, the loss that we have in our community. Uh, so let's be much in prayer, remember them tonight as we pray. All righty. If everybody will, let's go to the Lord in prayer tonight. And then Brother Hunter is going to come and lead us in some song. Lord, we thank you for another opportunity, Father, to be able to come in your house. And, Father, we thank you for the opportunity, Lord, that you've given us tonight. And we pray this evening, Father, that, Lord, you would help us to be led by your Holy Spirit, Father, to follow you tonight. We pray that you would bless the singing this evening, that, Lord, it would be uplifting, and that, Father, it would uh, bring glory and honor and praise to your name. We pray for the message tonight, Lord, that uh, we could... Our hearts would be focused, Lord, towards the cross for just a little bit this evening, Father, that, Lord, we can begin to reflect and re be reminded this evening for what you have done for us. We thank you for the cross of Calvary, and we thank you for your blood that was shed for us for the remission of sins. And we pray this evening, Father, as we partake in the Lord's Supper, we ask that, Father, you would be with us there in that time as well. Lord, we just love you, we thank you, and we praise you. And all this we ask in your name. Amen. Amen. You pray for Brother Hunter as he comes. We're going to sing 141 out of the White Book. <clears throat> On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my troll. Despised by the world, has a one. 
his glory above to bear it to dark Calvary. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I Let's all stand and sing 160.
praise the Lord for that singing this evening. Amen. Thank the Lord for that. And I am glad to know that he is alive tonight. And uh, it goes back to that uh, hymn that we sing, You Ask Me How I Know He Lives. He lives within my heart. And uh, I'm so thankful for that this evening. It's certainly good to be here tonight. And we do ask for your prayers that we'll try our best to uh, just mind the Lord this evening and uh, preach what God has given us and what he's laid on our heart for tonight. And uh, with this being the, the Friday before uh, Easter Sunday uh, this evening, I think that uh, it's only fitting that uh, we uh, look tonight at the cross. Uh, and uh, tonight we're going to go through and we're going to study this evening on the topic of the cross. And uh, we're going to go through God's Word. So if you have your Bibles this evening and uh, you would like to turn with me, uh, I believe all the Scripture tonight is going to be on the screen, and uh, so you can follow along tonight in uh, your copy of God's Word in your Bible or on the screen this evening. Uh, whatever uh, you feel led to do, that would be just fine tonight. But we're going to start uh, with Romans chapter 1 this evening, Romans chapter 1, uh, and we're going to look at one verse here in Romans chapter 1. And uh, if you would tonight, if you could and you're able, if you would, let's stand this evening uh, for the reading of God's Word in Romans chapter number 1. And uh, the only verse we want to look at in Romans chapter 1 this evening is verse number 16. And uh, the Bible says this, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. To everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word this evening. We thank you, Lord, for the good singing that, Father, we've been able to rejoice in tonight. Father, we ask that, Lord, you would please open our hearts this evening. Lord, to receive your word, we ask that you would open our minds for understanding. Lord, open our ears that we may hear and our eyes that we may see. And, Father, we pray that, Lord, we could take your word tonight and apply it to our lives, that, Lord, we could use it for your glory, your honor, your kingdom, that, God, we could live a life that is pleasing to you. Father, I pray this evening, if there is somebody here tonight that is with us or that is watching online, we pray that if they don't know you as their Savior, I pray this evening that they would have the opportunity and, Lord, be given the invitation to call upon your holy name and be saved. We love you. We thank you for the cross of Calvary tonight. And we pray that you be up, exalted and uplifted tonight and glorified in everything that's done. And all this we ask in your name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated this evening. Romans chapter number 1, uh, verse number 16 here as we've read. And uh, the Apostle Paul uh, as he began to start out here in Romans chapter 1. And, and uh, the book of Romans, the whole book of Romans, uh, is just great doctrine tonight. Uh, for you and I that have been saved by God's uh, marvelous and amazing and wonderful grace. And uh, as we find here that the Apostle Paul, as he started out, he began to state, and uh, the very first thing that he mentioned in verse 16 was this. He said, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Uh, as he went on to say, he was not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, but he goes on to say this. He said that it is the gospel uh, that is the power of God unto salvation uh, to everyone that believeth. If you are a note taker or uh, you like to highlight or underline in your Bible tonight, uh, that one word out right there, everyone, or two words, everyone, uh, that he says that the power of God unto salvation uh, to everyone that believeth. The gospel tonight, when it is preached and when it is proclaimed, uh, my friend, there is opportunity for lost people to be saved. And uh, the Apostle Paul said, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation for everyone that believe. 
Uh, I'm so glad of that this evening, aren't you? I believe tonight to start at the cross, we've got to look at uh, what we're preaching on, right? Uh, we're preaching about the gospel. And you say, preacher, what is the gospel tonight? Well, the gospel is proclaiming, uh, it is preaching, it is teaching or sharing the message of Jesus. And uh, that being the message of Jesus' birth, His life, his death, his resurrection, his ascension, and his return uh, one of these glorious days. Uh, my friend, to the, not only that, but it is the gospel that Jesus has the power and is able tonight to forgive sins uh, and, my friend, give us eternal life through him. Amen? Uh, I'm thankful for the gospel this evening. Look at 1 Corinthians tonight. 1 Corinthians chapter 17, and uh, the Bible says this, For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. Verse 18 says, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of of God. Amen? Uh, Paul made that statement that Jesus Christ had sent him to preach the gospel. Amen? He had sent him to preach the word of God. He said that the cross, uh, my friend, that not to preach with uh, the wisdom of words, uh, but we know that the gospel and the preaching of the cross tonight is powerful enough on its own, isn't it? Uh, the preaching of the cross tonight, it does not need need any kind of wise words or, or my friend, anything of any kind of wisdom to explain. But the cross tonight is powerful in its own self. And we find right here, he said the preaching of the cross. He said to them that perish, it's foolishness. But unto us that have been saved, it is the power of God. Amen. I'm thankful for the cross this evening. Look at Galatians chapter 3 tonight. Galatians chapter 3, verse number 13 says this, For Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree, uh, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles, through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. As we look tonight, what the Apostle Paul was talking about there was this, is that Christ hath redeemed us from the law. Amen? And we find not only as He redeemed us from the law, but as the Scripture says, is that Christ was made a curse for us. And it says, Cursed is everyone, every man, that hangs upon the tree. Now look at Deuteronomy tonight. In Deuteronomy chapter 21, verses 22 and 23, it backs up this verse. We find tonight in the Old Testament, it says this, And if a man hath committed a sin worthy of death, and he to be put to death, thou shalt, and thou hang him on a tree. It says, His body shall not remain all night upon the tree, but thou shalt at any wise bury him that day. For he that is hanged is a curse of God, that thy land be not defiled, which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance. We find tonight the Bible st uh, states that anyone that hangs upon a tree is a curse of God. So what are we seeing tonight? We find that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, was made a curse for you and I. He was made a curse for us. Uh, the Bible tells us was he that knew no sin yet became sin for us that we may become the righteous of God. So we find right here tonight that Jesus became uh, and was made that curse for you and I because cursed is the man that hangs on a tree. Uh, tonight we're going to look at Jesus and the cross. Jesus and the cross. And, and uh, tonight I I believe some of the best scripture uh, that points towards Jesus and the cross comes from John chapter 19 and verse 17. And we find right here is the Bible says, And he, bearing his cross, Jesus, went forth into a place called the place 
of a skull, which is called, in the Hebrew, Golgotha. We find that at Jesus, he was bearing his cross. And when you begin to look at the different accounts of the gospel, John is the one that, that we know that the scripture teaches us that John went all the way to the cross with the Lord. And we find here that John's account says that Jesus was bearing his cross. Not only that, but he went all the way to that place which was called the place of the skull. Or in the Hebrew name, Golgotha. Uh, when you look at that, it means skull. Uh, when, when you study on Golgotha or the place of the skull, uh, it was also referred to as Calvary. And the Latin word for Calvary means uh, meaning a skull. And the skull was a skull-shaped uh, hill that was there outside of ancient Jerusalem. And some of you that have been to Jerusalem and been to the Holy Land, you've probably seen that uh, firsthand with your own eyes. And and we can look at pictures and see that today of how uh, that was described. But John, as we find here, he said that our Lord Jesus, and my friend, he carried, he bared his cross all the way to Calvary's hill. And he carried that cross for you and for me. We find in John chapter 19, verse 19, the Bible says this, that on the cross, Pilate did he wrote a title or a sign and it said and Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross and the writing was Jesus of Nazareth the king uh, of the Jews. You see, that was very important uh, That P what Pilate did. You see, because as they had brought our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, before Pilate, and they brought the chief priest and the religious people, and they brought him up before Pilate, and they said, Pilate, for you know that we cannot sentence someone to death. It's unlawful for us to do this, but we can bring him before you, and you can sentence him to death. And we know the story of how Pilate, he said, I find no fault in this man. There is nothing that he's done that is worthy of death on the cross. But they begin to say, for, for we have no king. As he presented him, he said, behold the man. Behold Jesus, your king. And as they begin to shout, they said, for we have no king but Caesar. Caesar is our king. And we know the story how uh, Pilate, it washed his hands and, and delivered Jesus over uh, back into their hands and told him uh, to go and crucify him on the cross because he took the place of Barabbas, the murderer, as it was customary at that time of the Passover to change. Uh, there would be a, a change or a trade uh, of uh, prisoners and he would set one free. But my friend, Jesus took the place of Barabbas. But Jesus took the place of you and I as well that day. And we know that Pilate wrote this sign and he put it above the head of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And while that sign was placed on the cross, the Bible teaches us there uh, in verses nine, uh, 20 and 21 that the chief priest came before Pilate and said, Why? Do not put upon the cross, do not put on this sign that he is the king of the Jews, but put that he said he is the king of the Jews. But I like what Pilate said. He said, For what I have written, I, I have written. My friend Pilate made a bold statement. And he made a truthful statement that Jesus Christ, Jesus of Nazareth, my friend, he is the king of the Jews. Uh, but not only is he the king of the Jews tonight, but my friend, he is the king of kings. Uh, and he is the Lord of lords. Uh, he is king of all tonight. And he's my king. Uh, and I'm thankful to know this evening uh, that my friend, he is the king uh, that I serve. Uh, he's the king, my friend, uh, that I live my life for. Uh, and if you've never, my my friend surrendered uh, uh, to the King of Kings uh, and the Lord of Lords. Uh, I encourage you this evening uh, uh, to surrender to Jesus. Uh, and my friend, bow yourself uh, uh, before a holy king uh, and a great king. Uh, and my friend, surrender your heart and life to Jesus tonight. It'll be the greatest thing that's ever happened to you in your life. As Pilate put that up on the, the cross, we find not, all, not only on the cross as Jesus was there, we find that Jesus' mother and his mother's sister 
And we find in chapter 19, verse 25, says, Now there stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother, and his mother's sister, and Mary, the wife of Cleophas, and Mary Magdalene. We find that this group had followed Jesus all the way to the cross. But we also know in a few verses later that John, the beloved disciple, was as, he was there as well. And we know that as John was there, Jesus told him, he said, Son, behold, or he told his mother, he said, Behold thy son, and son, behold thy mother. And we know from that day forward that John took Mary and he took care of her. And my friend, we know that. But we find that these went all the way to the cross with the Lord. You see, the interesting thing about these people, his mother and his mother's sister and Mary, the wife of Cleophas, and we find that Mary Magdalene and the beloved disciple John, my friend, what faithfulness and my friend, what uh, commitment that they had to the Lord Jesus that they would go all the way to the cross of Calvary with him. My friend, that ought to speak volumes to you and I this evening because what we can learn from these that went all the way and that stood by the cross of our Lord is that they were committed they were faithful my friend they were steadfast they were unshakable they were unmovable they didn't care what the mob said they didn't care what the chief priest said they didn't care what the Roman soldier said but they went all the way to the cross and up into the death of our Savior listen my friend you and I can learn something uh, from these right here tonight you and I ought to have have the faithfulness tonight we ought to have the commitment we ought to be steadfast we ought to be unshakable and unmovable tonight in our commitment to Jesus that we are willing to go all the way tonight with the Lord even if it means my friend persecution even if it means death my friend for Jesus we ought to be willing to go all the way as these did they were committed to go all the way with the Lord we find in John chapter 19, verse 31, not only, my friend, what was going on and taking place there on the cross tonight, but we find in these words it says, The Jews, therefore, because it was the preparation that the body should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day. Now this ties back to the verse we read earlier in Deuteronomy chapter 21. And it says that they would not remain upon the cross the Sabbath day, for that Sabbath day was a high day. Besought Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. You know what is very uh, interesting in this right here is this, is while they were those other two that were crucified with our Savior, uh, the one on the right and the one on the left and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ this verse takes place this is the very next verse right after Jesus said it is finished and it said that he bowed his head and he gave up his ghost and in the other parts of the scripture in the other gospel said that he uh, commended he said father into thine hands I commend my spirit we know at this point in time in the scripture that Jesus was already dead my friend and that's very important because that's what it states uh, in, not, in verse number 30 but verse 31 it begins to tell us that the Jews they begin to want those other two that were still hanging on the cross and Jesus as well because they did not know just yet that he was dead and the Bible said right there he said I want you to go and break their legs now why would they break their legs uh, if they would break their legs uh, it would help them to suffocate and it would end instantly kill them it would cut the cross and the agony and the death time uh, my friend it would cut it down and it would be almost instant they would die suddenly and the Jews were ready uh, they to pull them all off the cross because they were getting ready for the Sabbath day and it said they broke the other two's legs but when they got to Jesus they noticed he was already dead my friend that speaks volumes tonight why you say that preacher because no man took his life from him he willingly laid down his life for you and for me he commended his spirit he my friend died on his own he, he said the father hath given me the power to lay down my life and also give me the same power to raise it up again you see the time they got to the Lord they seen he was dead 
And they said, check him with the spear. And what did they do? They pierced his side. And out came blood and water, which is a witness and a testimony to you and I tonight that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary for your sin and mine. I'm thankful for that this evening. We find there in uh, Matthew chapter 24 what else was going on on the cross, or 27, I'm sorry. We know that those that were around the cross, they ridiculed the Lord Jesus. Matthew chapter 27 verse 40 says this. Uh, it tells us about how those that were standing around said and saying, Thou that destroyest the temple and build it in three days, save thyself if thou be the Son of God. Come down from the cross. We find right there in Matthew 27 42, uh, the Bible says he saved others. Himself he cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross and we will believe him. My friend, they ridiculed the Lord. They made fun of the Lord. Look at Mark 15 verses 30 and 32. It says, save thyself. Come down from the cross. 32 says, let Christ the king of Israel descend now from the cross that we may see and believe and they that were crucified with him reviled him we find that our Lord took the criticism and the ridicule on the cross of Calvary I want to go on over tonight and I want to look at Paul's message of the cross and look at Philippians chapter 2 verse number 8 the Bible teaches us about Paul's message about the cross it said and being found in fashion as a man he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. There's a couple of things that stands out right there. Number one, Jesus was found in fashion as a man. Not only that, but he humbled himself. Not only that, he became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Look at Colossians 2, verses number 14. says, blotting out the handwriting of ordinance that was against us, which was contrary to us, that took it out of the way, nailing it, to his cross. What is he saying there? He's talking about the law. You see, Jesus fulfilled the law and prophets. And not only that, but my friend, we see that he took that, the sin and death, and he nailed it to the cross of Calvary. Look at Hebrews chapter 12, verse number 2. The Bible says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Listen, my friend, I'm glad to know tonight that Jesus is, as the Scripture says, He is the author and the finisher of our faith tonight. Amen? Not only that, but the Bible says, said he for the joy did you catch that for the joy that was set before him underline that word in your Bible tonight he endured the cross he endured the cross for you and I not only that but despising the shame my friend and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God this evening and he's making intercession for you and I tonight the Bible says there's one man between men and God God, that is the man, Christ Jesus. I'm thankful for that. I want to go on down tonight and close about the disciples' cross this evening. And we've looked tonight at the cross of where our Savior hung and died and bled. But tonight I think that the cross is important for you and I. You see, because for you and I that have been saved by God's grace and that's a follower of Jesus Christ... A disciple of our Lord and Savior. What is a disciple? It is a student, it is a pupil, it's a learner. That's what we are, aren't we? We are learning, we are following the Lord Jesus. And my friend, the Bible teaches us these verses are very, very important to you and I this evening for the disciples' cross. Look at Matthew chapter 10, verse number 38. The Bible says this, And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me there's three parts in that right there that speak number one takes not his cross Two, follow after me as Jesus said and is not worthy of me you see that he said if you don't take the cross your cross your cross my cross we've got a cross to bear we've got a cross to carry 
And if we don't take that cross, my friend, and take up that cross and follow the Lord, says he is not worthy of me. We have a cross to carry and bear as a disciple of Jesus Christ. Look at Matthew chapter 16. Jesus states this several times in the scripture. We're going to look at these because it's very important. Matthew 16, 24 says, Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself. That's important tonight. We've got to deny ourselves. And he said, take up his cross and follow me. Look at Mark chapter 8, verse 34. says, and when he had called the people unto him with his disciples also. That's very important tonight. Did you catch that? It said that he called the people. He's not talking just to the twelve, but he's talking to the multitude. Those that were gathered around that day as well. The audience that was there. My friend, those that were listening. He said, and called the people unto him with his disciples also and he said unto them whosoever will come after me let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me look at Mark chapter 10 verse 21 I know it looks like it's the same but Jesus keeps hammering this message he's speaking to the rich young ruler here and here's what he said then Jesus beholding him loved him and said unto him one thing thou lackest go thy way sell whatsoever thou hast and give to the poor and thou shalt have treasure in heaven and come take up the cross and follow me what was Jesus telling this man he's saying listen let go of everything get everything out of the way lay everything aside and follow Jesus listen my friend uh, that's what Jesus wants us to do tonight he wants us to lay aside every weight and sin that so easily besets us and he wants us to run the race tonight with patience with endurance fixing our eyes upon Jesus looking unto him my friend the author and finisher of our faith tonight Jesus look at Mark or Luke chapter 9 sorry Luke chapter 9 verse 23 he said and he said unto them all Jesus said unto them all here he said if any man will come after me let him deny himself take up the cross daily and follow me you know what stands out right there is this is a daily thing for you and I tonight we have to deny ourselves daily and take up the cross daily and follow Jesus. And coming to a close, Luke 14 tonight, verse number 27. And whosoever doeth not bear his, own, his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Jesus teaches us and tells us that we need to count the cost, doesn't he? You see, there is a cost to being a follower of Jesus Christ. And when you take up that cross, that cross is not sometimes a, a cross of joy. There's joy along the way for you and I that's been saved by the grace of God. There's peace along the way for you and I that are a child of God. But when you take up your cross and you begin to follow Jesus, my friend, just as that cross was for Christ, it was a cross of shame. It was a cross of suffering. It was a cross of persecution. My friend, the cross brings all kinds of different situations and circumstances in your life. But Jesus said, listen, when you face those persecutions or you're suffering for my name's sake, he said, remember this. The servant is not above his master. If they hated me, they're going to hate you. If they persecuted me, they're going to persecute you. There's a cost tonight for following Jesus. But I hope and pray tonight, you and I that's been saved by God's amazing and wonderful grace, that we would see the importance that it is of taking up the cross of Christ daily and following Jesus, denying ourselves, being obedient to what the Lord Jesus has called us and saved us to do. Let's pray tonight. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word. God, we thank you for the cross this evening. Father, as we're reminded that, Lord, it was on the cross that you was made curse for, you, for us. Lord, you took our sin and our shame and suffering and everything and you nailed it to the cross of Calvary. Lord, your word teaches us and tells us, Father, that you were bruised for our transgressions. 
Lord, by your stripes we are healed. And I thank you, Lord, for what you've done for us on the cross. I thank you, Father, for, for the joy, as your word teaches us, endured the cross, despising the shame. Lord, you went all the way and you didn't quit. You didn't give up. But you carried it all the way to Golgotha's hill. And they nailed you there and you shed your blood for us. And Lord Jesus, I'm thankful to know tonight that you have made atonement for our sin. Your blood tonight is enough to save the most wretched, wicked, and most vile sinner. And I thank you, Lord, for that. And Lord, we pray that if there is anyone here this evening that does not know you, I pray that they would come to the saving knowledge and understanding of you. And all this we ask in your name. Amen. As we stand to our feet this evening, the altars open, mind the Lord as they sing. I hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thine all in all. Jesus paid it all. He washed it white as snow. Lord, now indeed I find thy power and thine alone can change the leper's spots and melt the heart of stone. Jesus paid it all. about uh, even this evening and uh, uh, Wednesday night uh, as we went over our study going through our articles of faith and uh, we studied on the doctrine of, de of justification and uh, I am so thankful and I'm so glad tonight that I have been justified by the blood of Jesus aren't you and uh, I'm thankful for that this evening I'm thankful that our faith and our belief in Jesus Christ leads to righteousness and uh, it's not of our own works or our own righteousness tonight, but it is the righteousness of God this evening. And uh, I am so thankful for that. Does uh, anybody have anything on your heart you feel led to say uh, as a testimony or anything at this, at this time before we go any farther uh, in the service tonight? Amen. Amen. Appreciate that. Anybody else this evening? Thank the Lord. Amen. Appreciate that. Well, are you glad you're saved tonight? Say amen. Amen. Thank the Lord for that. All righty. If, if everybody would this evening, if you would be seated, um, I do want to uh, make mention of, um, before we do go any further this evening in our service, uh, that um, we will um, uh, do have, uh, of course, the Annie Armstrong Easter offering that's coming up on Sunday. Uh, so we definitely want to continue to keep that in mind. Remember that. Please remember. Uh, the uh, missionaries, North American missionaries, when you pray. Uh, and I uh, believe tomorrow they've decided to, to cancel the egg hunt due to the weather that's coming, the rain that's moved in here. So uh, remember that, that word, we'll get that out uh, on Facebook and, and different places. So keep that in mind, remember that. Uh, we'll just save the eggs for next year. So uh, we do appreciate everybody that uh, gave and helped out in that. So uh, remember that. Uh, but we'll be looking forward to Sunday morning, looking forward to what God has in store for the service on Easter Sunday. Uh, but at this time, we're going to move right on into uh, the time of our Lord's Supper. And uh, before the deacons come and prepare and get the table ready tonight, I did want just to share just a few things this evening uh, about the Lord's Supper. And uh, I believe that uh, the Lord's Supper is very, very important tonight uh, for us that have been saved by God's grace. 
uh, that uh, we know why we partake of this. And uh, the Lord's Supper is a part, it is one of the two ordinances uh, that we observe and that we uphold and that we partake in. Uh, one being baptism, the second being the Lord's Supper. And uh, I want to share just a little bit tonight about the Lord's Supper and a few things about it uh, and just explain why we do this. And uh, the Lord's Supper tonight is a, is a direct connection uh, that exists uh, with the Passover meal that was found in the Old Testament. But not only that, it was our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that partook of that Passover meal uh, with his disciples the night before he was betrayed. So we find tonight that there's three things that the Lord's Supper uh, points towards and that we can re that recalls to our mind uh, while we observe this and while we take it tonight. Uh, looking under the past, the, the Lord's Supper reminds us of the past. It calls to us to remember what our Lord shared with his disciples on the night he was betrayed. Uh, how they took the bread and the cup and they shared them with the significance of each of them and how his body was broken uh, for them and not only for them but for you and I as well uh, and for the world. Not only that, his blood was shed for the remission of sins for the world. So we find as what we do tonight as we gather to partake in the Lord's Supper, it brings us to a place of remembrance. We remember what the Lord done for you and I on the cross of Calvary and how he shed his blood for us and how his body was broken. Not only that, but it looks at the present for you and I. The Lord's Supper reminds us of the communion that we have with Christ. Communion is an expression of unity and commitment tonight. And I'm thankful for that, that the Lord has already reminded us of that in His Word this evening about the commitment. You know, for you and I that has been saved by God's grace, to be a born-again believer and a child of God, it takes commitment to the Lord Jesus. And not only commitment to the Lord Jesus, but we are, as a member of the church, we are to be uh, have a commitment to the church and coming to church and supporting the church in all areas that the church has. So there is a commitment tonight that it reminds us of. Not only that, it is also a time for us to be grateful or thankful for what our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, has done for us. The Lord's Supper is also a proclamation. The Bible teaches us that by eating the bread and drinking the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death as 1 Corinthians 11 verse 26 teaches us and tells us. It also is a time of examination. Uh, before we partake of the Lord's Supper, we need to examine ourselves according to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. We need to examine our heart, examine ourselves. You see, the Lord's Supper is to only be taken by those that have believed on Jesus as their Lord and Savior. The Lord's Supper is for born-again believers. Those, my friend, that have been, had experienced the regeneration and being born again. And not only that, but it is a future as well. Amen? Uh, tonight we are anticipation of our Lord's return, aren't we? Uh, the Bible teaches us in 1 Corinthians 11, verse 26 as well. It tells us, For whenever you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until He comes. Not only that, the Bible teaches us, as we're going to read here in a few minutes, it tells us, For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And Jesus said, For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. Amen. If you will tonight, be much in prayer. Brother uh, Hunter and uh, I believe uh, uh, Zoe and Hallie are going to come and they're going to sing a song this evening. And uh, I pray as they're singing tonight, uh, I encourage you just to prepare your hearts uh, as we enter into this time of our Lord's Supper. Should give his 
Praise the Lord for that. I'm going to ask at this time if our deacons would come and prepare the table and get ready for our Lord's Supper this evening. As they're coming to prepare, I do want to say this, that at uh, uh, the close of our supper this evening, and uh, once we all stand to our feet, they're going to, we're going to be led in a song, and a closing song, and, and you are more than welcome at that time. Uh, to go ahead and be dismissed or you can stand around stay around and uh, sing through the hymn that is there at the end of the close so but I did want to let everyone know that there at the end that you are more than welcome to be dismissed to leave I'm going to ask our men if they would to go ahead and uh, prepare this table and uh, get it ready Rick and Matt if you would the gospel of Luke chapter 22 verse number 13 the Bible teaches us and says and they went and found as he had said unto them and they made ready the Passover and when the hour was come he sat down and the twelve apostles with him and he said unto them with desire I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer for I say unto you, I will not and any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took bread and gave thanks and break it and gave unto them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. Brother Rick, would you lead us in prayer?
Lord Jesus said, as he took bread and gave thanks and brake it, and gave unto them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Take and eat. Likewise also, our Lord took the cup after supper and said, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. Take and drink. If everybody would stand at this time, they're going to come and get a song together. As I mentioned, you're more than welcome at this time, once the song begins, to be dismissed, or you can stand and stay and sing. Whatever the Lord leads you to do tonight, we might, I pray you just be obedient and mind the Lord. 